It's still the first half of the year and all four of the largest gaming smartphone companies in the world have already released their flagship gaming beasts with shoulder triggers, internal cooling, high refresh rate displays and Qualcomm's latest flagship chipset, the Snapdragon 888. All four of these gaming centric devices may have very similar internals, but how do they stack up against each other in not one, not two, but three different benchmark runs where we will test out battery drain, heat dissipation, score and frames per second. All four devices have been updated to their latest available software update, that being Android 11 across the board. All of them have 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, except for the Legion Phone 2 Pro, which is rocking just eight gigs of it, and all of them utilize UFS 3.0. 3.1 storage. They all have Full HD plus AMOLED displays and they're all paired with high refresh rate panels, that being 144 Hz on the ROG Phone 5, Legion Phone 2 Pro and Black Shark 4 Pro, with the Red Magic 6 coming out on top with a massively incredible 165 Hz refresh rate panel. I'll be using their respective gaming modes and high performance modes on of course all four devices here, that being X mode within the Armory crate on the ROG Phone 5, Rampage mode within Lenovo's Legion Realm, Super Performance Mode within Red Magic's Game Space, and Max Performance Mode within Black Shark's Shark Space. But do bear in mind that Shark Space only seems to support one of the benchmarks, that being Geekbench 5, leaving Antutu and 3D Mark Wildlife left behind. The first benchmark we'll be running through today is Antutu version 9.0.5. Then next up we have Geekbench version 5.4.1 and last but not least we have 3D Mark Wildlife version 2.2. How do the world's best gaming smartphones of the year so far compete against one another in three very demanding benchmark tests? This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get started, it's worth checking out the battery percentages at the start. They are all different. I will compare this at the end to their respective battery percentages to see how much drain they get in relation to milliamp hour per minute drainage. We'll also be using an emissivity level of 0.5 so that we can test out these four electronic devices heat dissipation levels between each benchmark and of course at the end comparing it to what we just saw at the start over there. First benchmark test we'll be running through is of course Antutu version 9.0.5. I have set them all to their best performing mode that they can handle within each of their gaming respective apps. And the hottest phone at the start before starting the test was the Legion Phone 2 Pro and the coolest was of course the Black Shark 4 Pro. It is also worth mentioning that the Legion Phone 2 Pro and Red Magic 6 both have internal cooling fans and while the Legion Phone 2 Pro has two of them, one intake and one outtake, the one is 12,500 and 15,000 on the other one in terms of revolutions per minute. While the Red Magic 6 is limited to just one internal cooling fan, it can go all the way up to a massive 20,000 revolutions per minute. This is Antutu version 9, the first time I'm doing it within a proper fully fledged benchmark test on my channel. And just to let you guys know what has changed in terms of the GPU section of the test, they have brought in Swordsman, which is the first one that you just saw, and they've gotten rid of Coastline, which is the one by the beach over there with the boot. And and it looks pretty good. I enjoy Swordsman. It looks pretty decent. Scores are high this time around compared to version 8, just like we saw going from version 7 to version 8 to version 9. Very similar in that respect because no, they aren't throwing in less demanding benchmark tests within Antutu. They've actually just optimized it for the current technology of say 5 nanometer architecture, which we're seeing now, instead of what it was optimized for last year, which was 7 nanometer. So in terms of Vulkan API and OpenCL and OpenGL API, it's more accustomed to the the hardware that we're seeing in front of us here. They have, however, kept the Terracotta Soldier part of it the same, as well as the refinery, which you saw just before this one. In terms of testing our graphics within and Tutu, so not too much has changed, but at the end of the test, when it comes to user experience, they have added in video CTS, as well as video decoding to test that out. Now, looking at the scrolling over here, testing out the user experience, the difference between 165 Hertz on the Red Magic and 144 on the Black Shark for pro you can't really tell much of a difference. I would say the biggest jump is probably from 60 to 90, then 90 to 144. But anything above that, you can't really feel much of a difference or you know, see much of a difference when playing a game or motion scrolling around your phone. After Antutu testing out the temperatures over here, the ROG Phone 5 added the most at 17.7 .7 degrees in Celsius, where the Black Shark added the least, which was only 13.8. 
being the least at 13.8 degrees in Celsius is a bit crazy, showing how demanding these benchmark tests truly are. Going into Geekbench version 5.4.1 now, just letting you guys know that at the end of the Antutu test, the hottest phone overall was the Legion and the coolest still the Black Shark. After running through Geekbench, just testing a single and multi-core CPU scores, the ROG once again added the most with 4.1 degrees in Celsius, and this time around the Red Magic 6 added the least with just adding 0.9 degrees in Celsius. We're testing our GPU again, so we had CPU in the middle of the two GPU benchmarks, that being Geekbench. This one is testing out GPU 3D Mark Wildlife over here. I will be testing out 3D Mark Wildlife in the near future, the extreme version of it, that is. So stay tuned for that one. So far, so good in terms of frames per second on all devices. A lot better than last year's 7 nanometer run Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus processing chip, but the 888 is known to have heating issues. That's why the heating dissipation is going through the roof over here. Uh, the Red Magic is doing a lot better than the Legion Phone 2 Pro in keeping things cooler. It is pretty much adding the same in terms of degrees Celsius, comparing it to other phones without internal cooling fans, those two in the middle, which do have it, doesn't really quite make too much sense to me. After testing out the last benchmark test of year, which was 3D Mark Wildlife, the ROG Phone 5 actually dropped by negative 1.2 two degrees in Celsius, as well as the Legion and Black Shark dropped, but the Red Magic added to that. And checking out the start to the end temps, the hottest device here was the Legion Phone 2 Pro, ending off with 57.8 degrees in Celsius. The coolest ending off was the Black Shark 4 Pro at just 49.5 degrees in Celsius, which actually added the least, only adding 16.7 degrees in Celsius, which is actually saying a lot since that's still getting quite hot over there. And the one that added the most is the ROG Phone 5. And when it comes to battery drain, you've got to remember that the largest battery cell is all the way on the left being the ROG Phone 5 and the smallest all the way on the right being the Black Shark 4 Pro with a mere 4,500 milliamp hours and of course the ROG Phone with 6,000 milliamp hours. The ROG Phone drained the least at just 8% and the two that drained the most was the Red Magic and the Black Shark with 10% each of course because they do have the smallest batteries here of the test with the Legion Phone 2 Pro slap bang in the middle of those two but you've got to bear in mind that in terms of the capacity the large capacity cell on the ROG phone, as well as the percentage drain. Working out that milliamp hour per minute reading doesn't necessarily mean the ROG phone 5 is draining less than that of the Black Shark 4 Pro, which actually got a better milliamp hour per minute reading of 23.7, as opposed to the ROG phone 5's 25.3, because the Black Shark has a smaller battery. The Red Magic 6 was the worst over here, but let's wait for a proper battery drain technique style, of course. So stay tuned for that one. It is coming very soon, but between these four gaming centric devices. The Black Shark 4 Pro placed first in our first benchmark, which is of course Antutu version 9, with a massive score of 836,000. Second was the Lenovo, third was the Red Magic, all within close proximity, and right at the bottom, strangely enough, is the ROG Phone 5 with a mere 743,000 points, though bear in mind I have hit over 800,000 with it before. When it comes to Geekbench version 5.4, taking a look at single core performance first and foremost, this time the ROG Phone 5 came out on top, second was the Lenovo, third was the Black Shark 4 Pro, all pretty similar over here, just a point or two difference between them, and then last and certainly least the Red Magic 6 over here with a score of 1109. Though it is quite a jump down from third place, it's still pretty decent in terms of single core scoring when it comes to Geekbench version 5. When it comes to multi-core performance, once again the ROG Phone 5 places first here with a score of 3618, but second and third place have flipped now with second being the Black Shark 4 Pro and third being the Legion Phone 2 Pro. Dead last, once again the Red Magic 6 and if you take a look at the scores, once again the first three are pretty much identical with the Red Magic 6 falling quite a bit behind. And last but not least, we have 3D Mark Wildlife, which truly stresses out the GPUs, which are of course integrated within Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipsets. First place, we have the Black Shark 4 Pro with 5811 points. Second, not far behind that, is the Legion Phone 2 Pro. Third, not too far behind that either, the ROG Phone 5. And quite a jump down, once again, the Red Magic 6. Taking a look at frames per second over here, the highest frames per second is of course the Black Shark with 34.8. 34.7 on the Legion, 34.5 on the ROG, once again they are really similar, and 33.6 frames per second on the Red Magic 6, with all of them having pretty similar minimum and maximum frames per second. I can't exactly say that Snapdragon have knocked it out the park this year with the Snapdragon 888 chipset, hopefully they improve this going forward, especially in terms of heat dissipation, 
especially on gaming phones which actually have internal cooling fans, that CPU is just destroying them. Nevertheless, all phones did pretty well, pretty similar in this trio of benchmark runs over here. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is TechNick and I'll catch you in the next one.